Hey guys, it's Dio with your son passing by today to talk about a subject that I'm asked a lot uh, at my practice. That is, I have a full thickness tendon tear. Does it heal by itself or do I need surgery? Just like everything that I answer in this channel, it depends. Each case has to be analyzed separately. Now, what I do want to tell you today is that, yes, full thickness tendon tears do heal, okay? Don't get confused tendons with ligaments. There are ligament tears that don't heal, like the ACL. The stabilization of the joint will depend on other factors, but that's another video. Tendons can heal with conservative treatment, okay? But that will depend on the separation of the tendon. So a tendon can snap and have a small separation. And the surgeon may choose a conservative treatment with casting. The tendon has some cells that are involved in growth process called fibroblasts. They produce some of the matrix, you know, of the tendon, the collagen type one, proteoglycans, amongst many others. And those fibroblasts produce fibrocytes, that is the glue of the body. Those are what we popularly call scar tissue. The body will pretty much release, the fibroblasts will release that scar tissue that will glue the tendon, fill up the gap, and it's healed. Now, let's analyze the pros and cons. Let's talk about the Achilles tendon, for example. After an Achilles tendon tear, there is a higher incidence of re-tearing the tendon after conservative treatment. So if you don't have surgery, you're a higher chance of re-tearing the tendon. Now, there is a higher incidence of pain after surgery. So you have surgery, the responsiveness of the muscle to the contraction, the strength will be better but there is a higher incidence of inflammation, tendonitis, peritendonitis, bursitis, after Achilles repair. There is also a higher risk, you know, of infection, you know, complications of the post-surgical that the conservative treatment is not. So in the end, the surgeon has to see how big the gap is, if it's, the tendon is completely blown up and destroyed and frayed, or if it's a it's a clear tear in what part of the tendon. The Achilles tendon is very avascular, around six centimeters higher than insertion, six centimeters up from the calcaneus. Uh, most of the tears happen there, but then a number of tears could actually break the bone, which is called an avulsion fracture. It breaks off a piece of bone. Um, those are a little more complicated and you'll be looking into a surgical repair. Let's talk about a nerve bearing joint, like the shoulder. Uh, I have a number of patients and friends that had a full thickness tear of the uh, supraspinatus tendon and they have recovered full strength, just absolutely normal, like, like solid like a rock. And the reason for that is a lot of the neural activation that tense up the muscle that requires for the biomechanic of raising your arm and everything is just transferred and redistributed to the remaining muscles. Now, researchers show that most people will lack maybe 20, 30 to 40% of strength on that arm, on that limb, that they have the full thickness tear after the healing, after healing with conservative treatment. Now, <clears throat> let's say you have a major separation, huge separation, the tendon tears and the muscle completely contracts. There's a huge gap. You just don't go through surgery. Um, is that muscle gonna stay bumpy? Um, are you gonna have the deformity forever? The answer to that is each case is a case, like everything else, but 
Typically, when that muscle is not being used, the body reabsorbs that because protein is a source of energy. Uh, the body uses protein in a process called uh, proteolysis, that it breaks down protein. Protein actually has a carbonic chain that can be broken down and used as glucose for energy. We all go through that. So uh, those people that you see like in concentration camps, that they look like really skinny, they have no muscle mass, is because obviously their nutrition is horrible they, and the body's completely eating up all the muscles that is the only source of glucose to keep them alive. So they literally lose all the muscle mass so their heart can beat, their brain can function, and yes, you can live a long time like that, but you know, you see the results. It looked like a walking skeleton. Very sad thing to see, but you know, just as an example of the physiology and the histology behind it. So the body will typically reabsorb that muscle and also you will find some fatty deposit. So in the case, you know, sticking to the supraspinatus tear, for example, um, if you go back at it, years later after the tear it cannot be repaired that's another question that people ask me and that's why i'm giving that explanation um, typically the repair has to be done within a few weeks after the tear because if you wait too long after that tear there's a considerable amount of of uh, scar tissue and even longer if you wait months or years the muscle is completely being reabsorbed and there's fatty tissue being replaced on that, the it replacing the muscle that is torn, okay? So there are advantages for conservative treatment. If you're not a high performance, high level athlete, there are um, benefits, advantages for surgical repair depending on the size of the tear, if there is an avulsion fracture, if there is a, uh, another injury associated or some comorbidity that would affect the healing. So talk to your surgeon. I do wanna give this message, tendons do heal. Uh, it has been demonst demonstrated. There is a, uh, an article that I just checked from 2012 is not, uh, we're in 2019 right now, it's not that um, new, it's a little bit, a few years old, but it has been shown through before and after MRI, two months after the injury, two out of 24 patients with full thickness tear of the supraspinatus had a completely impeccable, impeccably healed supraspinatus, so it is possible it's still only two out of 24 patients then <clears throat> the other nine the tear was only smaller the other nine it did, just didn't change and four of them actually got a little worse so you gotta check the statistics and really like what happened case to case which is not described in the research so if you have a strong knowledgeable physical therapist a good team to work with the willpower to do the strengthening, to listen to your body. Yes, you can pull it off without surgery. If you're a high performance athlete, have a good surgeon, you trust him, you wanna go through the procedure, you have a good physical therapist for the post-surgical, check the pros and cons, go for it. That's the message, let me know what you think, let me know your questions, thank you so much.